Both Microsoft and Sony have unveiled their next generation consoles, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Been getting a lot of questions, so putting a video together, talking about the specs, the price, a bunch of information about both consoles, and then getting some information from you guys as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com. As I said, Xbox One, PS4, two new consoles, both available for pre-order now. You can actually go pre-order them at various places, Amazon being one of them. You've got uh, the Xbox One being $500 and the PS4 being $400. So a $100 price difference, that's pretty big if you think about it. Uh, so uh, pretty interesting that Microsoft decided to find that price point a little bit higher than Sony did. So again, you can pre-order it now. It comes out around the holiday season. We don't really know official release dates just yet. Um, I can add annotations if an official release date does come out. But again, I want to talk about the specs of it. We want to take a quick look at them as well. So I can throw up some pictures uh, next to me and you will see the PS4, uh, it, it looks good, so does the Xbox One. I mean, both of them design-wise look fine. When it comes to design and uh, looks of it, it's not that big of a deal to me, honestly. It sits under next to my TV anyways, and you rarely look at it. I mean, as long as it works and does what it's supposed to, I'm not, uh, I really don't care what it looks like because I'm not necessarily looking at it all the time. And size-wise, PS4 does seem to be smaller than the Xbox One, somewhat considerably. Uh, again, size, unless you're someone that is uh, gaming a lot at different houses or different places and moving your system around a lot, size isn't a big deal. Again, it sits by your TV. Now, when it comes to specs, both of them the exact same processor, AMD Jaguar X86 and 8-core processor, so that should be great. Uh, both of them have 8 gigabytes of RAM, Xbox One having DDR3 RAM and the PS4 having GDDR5 RAM. Uh, again, both 8 gigabytes. Both of them have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, so that's pretty big. I don't know if they're going to have storage options. I'm sure you're going to be able to switch out hard drives for larger ones if you need it. Uh, both have a Blu-ray and DVD player. It's kind of funny. A lot of people are always asking when the conversation with the Xbox One comes up, everyone's like, oh, does it have a Blu-ray player? If you think about it, I mean, how often do you... I mean, there's some people that watch Blu-rays I, myself included, along with a lot of my friends, we don't watch very many Blu-rays, so I mean it's not that big of a deal. Again, games can be made on those Blu-ray discs. Both consoles have a 1080p output resolution along with 4K compatibility, which is nice. I mean it makes it a little bit more future-proof just uh, because I'm sure you're going to see start seeing more and more 4K. Again, content's going to need to start being created in that 4K resolution for that to become uh, usable. Now I want to touch on the controller a little bit. Both of them, of course, have two different controllers. They went with similar designs and looks of their previous controller on the PS3 and the Xbox 360. I'll throw up some pictures. I couldn't find uh, an Xbox 360 and an Xbox One comparison side by side like I have for the PS4, but here's the Xbox 360, Xbox One comparison. You'll see they look similar. Um, and then here is the PS4 side by side you'll see split in half so you'll see again very similar design uh, size wise they're very similar as well I believe the PS4 is a little bit larger so going with the larger controller like the Xbox uh, 360 controller or the Xbox One controller also the Xbox One does come with a Kinect sensor for uh, movement and voice controls it is said that you cannot disconnect the Kinect camera so I don't know how that's going to be handled. Again, there's privacy concerns that do come up with that. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so you know the specs, you know the price of them. I want to get into some features of both consoles, some controversial features as well. Uh, main one being about used games. So I wanted to touch on that as well. Now when it comes to used games, there's two differences with the PS4 and the Xbox One. With the PS4, it's like you're used to. You get a disc, you can trade it, you can sell it, you can... Give it to your little brother. You can do whatever you want with the discs. And, I mean, there's no restrictions whatsoever on that. So you buy a game, it's yours, you do whatever you want with it. You can sell it, trade it in, GameStop, all those places. Now, when it comes to the Xbox One, this is where it gets very controversial. You really can't trade freely. Um, you can only trade in games with pre-qualified retailers. You can't tr trade in with 
I believe GameStop and places like that, no independent game shops you can do trade-ins with, which means there's going to be less competition for trade-ins, which means you're probably not going to get as much money for your trade-ins as well. And also, if you're looking to sell one of the games that you own, you have to be friends with them for 30 days to sell them a game. I don't get that at all. And then you also, after you sell it to them, it's locked to them. They can't sell it anymore. So it's really weird that they did that. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's crazy because you buy a game and you're saying, okay, it's my game. I should be able to sell it whenever I want to. I don't have to be friends with someone for 30 days to sell them a game that I own. It's a big problem. A lot of people raised a bunch of issues to Microsoft and they didn't seem to want to change it at all. So they're sticking with that. However, I do want to make a note that with the Xbox One, you can actually share your games with up to 10 family members so they can log in and access your games and play them. So that's a note that uh, I wanted to, to point out to some people. Now, when it comes to the PlayStation 4, as long as you have electricity, you can play your games. Your single-player games, obviously you're not going to be able to play multiplayer if you're not connected to the internet, but you can play single-player campaign, all that good stuff. However, on the Xbox One... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just hard for me to say this with a straight face. With the Xbox One, it's going to check, it needs to have an online check every 24 hours. So you connect your Xbox One to the internet, and then after, you can disconnect it after you do that. You can play your single player game. However, after 24 hours, you need to be back on the internet for it to check again. Otherwise, you can't play your games. It's not going to work. Single player, whatever, multiplayer, whatever, if you're not connected to the internet, after 24 hours, it's not going to work. You can't play games. I don't get it. I just can't wrap my head around their logic when it came to that, that rule. I mean, come on. I have my system. I want to play my games that I bought. I go and buy games. I buy my system that's mine. I buy games that's mine. I can't just play the games. I need to be on the internet. What if you have a slow internet connection? What if you're in an area that doesn't use the internet? I know there's a lot of military people that don't have access to the internet all the time, and they still play video games. I just don't get it at all. And also, with these online checks, the Xbox One is region locked. So it's only going to work in certain areas. The PS4 is going to work everywhere. Obviously, again, if you have electricity, it'll work. But with the Xbox One, it's region locked. I'm going to throw up, I'm going to have a map next to me showing you guys which regions the Xbox One is going to work in and which ones the PS4 is going to work in. Of course, PS4 being everywhere. And finally, if you are looking to do online gaming, multiplayer gaming, you are going to need to purchase a subscription service for both consoles, Xbox Live Gold being the one for the Xbox One, and then PlayStation Plus being the one for the PlayStation 4. Uh, with that, I believe Xbox Live is $60 a year, and the PlayStation Plus membership is going to be about $50 a year. So, uh, again, with that, you do get benefits with the Xbox. I believe you get two free games a month. I don't know what kind of games they're going to be, but uh, that is a plus for being a gold member. And then with the PlayStation Plus, they give away free games all the time as well. And if you're someone that might say, oh, I'm online all the time, it's not a big deal. Or you might say, oh, I don't trade games, I don't sell games, anything like that. That's really not the point. You're really missing it. The point is Microsoft is really trying to control what you do with your device that you purchase. And that's just not something I can support when I buy something. I want to be able to do what I want with it, when I want with it, and uh, it really shouldn't be restricted at all. And that's what Microsoft's doing, so I can't support that. Hopefully you guys don't support that as well. If you have a device, you want to own it, you want to do what you want with it. So in conclusion, as most of you know, when I do comparisons of phones or whatever it be, I try and be as unbiased as possible and just give an honest opinion about them. Just look at the, the straight-up facts about the devices and then compare them. And with this one, it's just... Some of the features that were included with the Xbox One just make absolutely no sense to me. I mean, come on, I gotta be friends with someone for 30 days to sell them a game that I purchased? Just doesn't make sense. And of course, there are a lot of others that I mentioned in this video. So again, this was an unbiased comparison of these specs and features. And I mean, even the price difference. You got a $100 price difference as well. The one thing that was trying to hold me back from buying a PS4 as opposed to an Xbox One was Halo or a new Halo game. I'm a fan of playing Halo. I play Halo 4 on my Xbox 360, but it's not going to be enough. I'm going to go with the PS4 myself. Um, I mean, it's just, just all these things put together. Microsoft not really caring about what the consumer wants. People complain. And hey, I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, you're not going to listen to what I want. I'm just going to go and buy another product. That's how it works. So... 
Uh, you'll have to let me know what, which one you're going to purchase or which one you like better, which one you are thinking about purchasing. I'll leave a poll in the description of the video. Just go ahead and click on that link over to my site and go ahead and vote in the poll. So you can go ahead and vote over there. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And also just go ahead and leave a comment on this video as well and let me know which one you're going to buy or which one you're, you like more, the Xbox One, PS4, or even neither. Just go ahead and give me your opinion, leave a comment. I'd also appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. You could subscribe to me as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thanks for watching.